We are having a mini boil because it is the end of November. We were lucky to enough to, I don't catch about 60, yeah. about 60 crawfish. So these are our goodies. This is what we're going to do. Sort of traditional, but yet not because I have to always add some of my own stuff. So we have oranges and lemons and garlic just topped. We have garden bell peppers, garden onions, garden cayenne, and unfortunately, store-bought potatoes. Chicken broth, homegrown apple cider vinegar. This is the Old Bay and the Creo Zydorans together. This is my homemade chili powder, white and black pepper, fresh rosemary from the garden and dry bay leaves and then of course we have to have our xanarans and there's a touch of slappy mama all the goodies and we are getting ready to add all of our goodies return the propane yeah off return so the propane off so yeah so first things first four cups of chicken broth and the water is only to about right here Equal amounts of Old Bay and apple cider vinegar. White and black pepper with my homemade chili powder, which is pretty darn good. We have four good sized dried bay leaves and three four inch sprigs of rosemary. One whole bottle of the Xanaran shrimp and crab boil yeah. <laughs> and one whole box it's gonna be a spicy drop that in. no you just drop the bag in that's why it's made that way okay then we're adding the four heads whole big the biggest ones i can find garlic and then this is th um three oranges and three lemons just quartered no just let them cook let me squeeze the other ones at the end four homegrown very hot cayenne peppers some garden bell peppers in fact these are the very last of our garden bell peppers and they are so sweet yeah, it's all gone now. I got to pull out the last of it because of the frost. And four onions. And I use yellow because a white is just a little too strong. And I'm not going to put the potatoes in yet. You sure? I'm afraid they'll get too soft. All right. Well, and these are red potatoes. And of course, I just cut the eyes, washed them, cut the eyes, and quartered them. So, yeah, the sausage goes in with the cool down because it's already cooked. There's no need to overcook it. So when we do our cool down, that's when we'll add the corn, the sausage, the butter. Don't forget the butter. Got to have the butter. That's like a, a must. Nothing is good until you add the butter. Okay. Now, Did you slap your mama? I already did. It's, I have the. Oh, I got to throw some more in there. You want more slap your mama? Okay. So I gather we're going to put in some more slap your mama because for some reason my husband wants it spicy. And anybody yeah. who knows him, <laughs> he's a little on the vicious side. I think there's one bigger in there. Oh, yeah, there is. There's one in there that is huge. I was eating the meat out of it. Oh, you can eat the meat out of these claws. In fact, that's what I, that's what I usually make my, um, I make this like crawfish kind of. Steve, go ahead, honey. Stick your hand in there again. Go ahead, honey. Stick your hand in there again. Just like you did last time. Yep. His it must have been his brother. Yeah, I want to measure that. After I you ready, baby? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now you can see the color. Yeah, the color's nice. And it smells really good. Wow. There goes the glasses. Oh. 
Ready? Okay, I'm gonna pour them in. Going a little low on light. I'm doing it. There, you get to be the first one in. Five minutes. That's all I boil them for. It's going to take it about a minute to come back up to boil, so total about six minutes. So. Okay. Ready for the cool down? Man, this is going to be a lot. Frozen corn on the cob. Yep. It's, even if you use fresh, you should freeze it because this is kind of important to do the cool down and this helps it with the soak. And I try to get it down in there so it's not just cool on top, but everywhere. And Gulf shrimp. Look at that big old pot of I know. Is <laughs> it gonna be so yummy? I'm going to, hold on. And we are at... It says, I'd like, I said, I'd like to have it at 150, but it looks like I'm at 160, 165, which isn't totally bad, but I want to stir it. Okay, so we've let everything soak on a cool down soak for about 20 minutes. So it's about, what, 150, honey? Yep. Okay, so now we're going to take it, drain it here before we dump it on the table, which is the fun part. This thing weighs like 35, 40 pounds, honey. Oh, holy Moses. Ooh, ooh, I'm making stock out of that. I don't care how much stock I have in the freezer. Look at this. This is going to make some yummy stock. Ready, baby? Amen. <laughs> Okay, I can hold this. I am. I'm holding it. Oh, don't let the cord fall. Oh, yeah. That's a chicken there, baby. How's it look? Take this out. Is it pretty? All right. Let's eat. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby, get a little stuck. It's a Saturday joy ride. Percy Beast is the spot. Feeling fine, drinking Tennessee whiskey, a big blue sky. We're going up, we're coming down. There's a party on the water, it's a hell of a time. We're on the boat, we're killing time. In our own honky tonk with a bottle of wine, we're going up. As you can see, even with some of our smaller hauls, it's more crawfish than we can eat in one sitting. So let's make some crawfish bisque. We gather up all the tails and shell them, and some of the bigger claws too. Sometimes we're tired after the boil. Steve likes to vacuum pack them because they keep so much better. Keeping crawfish in the refrigerator or in the freezer will dry them out immensely. If you vacuum pack them, you can keep them overnight, three days, and they'll still be great. Now we take the rest of the carcasses and all the peeled carcasses that from what we ate during our boil, we crush them down and we pour all the liquid in, which has all those yummy ingredients and spices and herbs and onions. And you wanna let that boil for about, I'd say six to eight hours 
on medium to medium high heat depending on whether you have electric or gas. Medium for gas, medium high for electric. Just keep your eye on it. After it boils for, I'd say, a good hour, then I'd turn it down and let it simmer to like a nice low heat. In that first hour, it really doesn't hurt to visit your pot, take a big spoon, and give those crawfish heads and tails a good squish, crunch, and an extra stir, just to make them happy. Now we're gonna strain the boil water that we have taken and reduced for our stock. And we're gonna make something very yummy for you today, I hope. The straining it is very important. Since we've crushed all of the carcasses, you're gonna have bits and pieces of shell and bits and pieces of meat. But what we're after is the stock. Here's the ingredients that we're gonna use. We have some crawfish, some celery, some onions, some corn left over from the boil, and some sausage. Now, as you can see, Steve is shelling all those tails. And unless you have very tough hands, I would wear gloves because they will slice your hands up. Chopping up onions, and I usually put in two good size onions. Melting my butter, now I'm gonna start with two sticks because this is a pretty good size pot. And we're gonna make our roux, which is our thickening agent. And if you don't know how to make roux, please feel free to ask and I will answer in the comments. But it's basically butter and flour added at the right time. And then you want to cook it till it reaches a pretty golden brown, like a light mahogany or a it just, it just has to be gold. You'll know when it's gold. Keep whisking. We don't want any lumps. It's like having lumps in your gravy. And if you've made gravy before, you can make roux. Now we're adding stock. Actually, I missed the part where the roux was perfect. I apologize, but it was gold. And now we're adding some of our heated up stock from earlier. The stock is in and we're whisking. Now in the other pan, I've added another half a stick to a stick of butter and a couple of finely chopped onions. And we get these sauteed and we're gonna add some more goodies to it here, watch. We're gonna get the corn off the cob and we're gonna add that to the onions and get that sauteed. There it goes. This is gonna be yummy. If you don't want corn in your bisque, you don't have to add the corn. We just like the sweetness that it provides. As you can see, it is now coming to a nice rolling boil. We've turned our heat down. It's thickening up. The longer you cook it, the thicker it will get. Just like cooking gravy. I decided I wanted some more green onions in there. I just like the onions and the garlic. You didn't see me chop the garlic. There is some garlic in there too. And then, as you see, we've taken the leftover sausage and we're finally slicing it. We like our bis to be a little meatier. It's not a chowder. I don't put potatoes or anything like that in it but we're gonna put that in with the sauteed onions and the corn and let it heat up really well. Let me apologize for the lighting. Since this was shot, my husband has now bought professional lighting. Yay. Now we're gonna add about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of half and half. And next we're gonna add about the same of some heavy whipping cream. This is not diet food. <laughs> I continue to stir on a low heat for a while just to make sure everything's incorporated and nothing curdles. It helps a lot if you keep an eye on this. Not that it would burn at such a low heat, but it could cook and cause some clumps. So keep an eye on it, keep that whisk handy, and keep stirring. Let's add in all the goodies that we just sauteed. 
we're going to mix this thoroughly once we get in there. Apologize for the angle here, but I was trying to show you how I was getting everything in the pot that I possibly could. It does look pretty good. Now, we're going to add their crawfish. Crawfish is the last ingredient because we don't want to overcook them. I mean, they'll turn rubbery if you overcook them. But we're just going to stir that all up. And then we'll probably turn it way down. Like, this is an electric stove. I literally put it on like two. And I just want to let it simmer for a while so the crawfish soaks up some more of the goodies. And it will thicken up for you too because the heavy whipping cream helps to thicken it up with the roux. Looks good, doesn't it? Here it is. It's not only pretty, but it's delicious. We like to put croutons, a little parsley, and some extra green onions, and dinner is ready.